are you fucking serious? I just yeah. post like, like really, like really, like I want to see a boomer like defend extrajudicial murder by drone of a child. Right. Like I right. want it. I really want to see that just so I can call them a scum. They just they compartmentalize face. and they're like, well, you know, we had to do that because America's Reasons. safe. And, yeah, because yeah. because uh, because they hate us for our freedoms. <laughs> We're, okay, we're still going with that 9-11 bullshit. All right, cool. Got mm-hmm. it. Fantastic. Are our enemies just as precise, though, against uh, trying to avoid uh, civilian casualty Americans? No. They no, don't really we don't, don't care, want to right? become our enemies. <laughs> <laughs> so they take a presumption on their half. The moment they do that, that this is going to happen back at them. And right. I think we take a lot more precaution, I would say, than other people, other states, in terms of trying to eliminate. There's like a whole... Like, yeah. Ballet cause in a, in a way how you're supposed to perform. I think um, like even uh, the military have it much more difficult to try to shoot someone than a cop here. As a military, you have your rules of engagement uh, and that can uh, pretty much mess up your, I don't know, your career if someone catches that and reports you versus here as a cop. Hey, I said, uh, stop resisting. And I felt, you know, that dog was coming at me pretty harsh. That 90 pound chihuahua was such a threat, right? Yeah. Do yeah. the do Iranians have a rules of engagement? Right. I'm, I mean, they haven't been in many military conflicts, actually. It's weird. Well, yeah, because they, they got they don't they occupy got, foreign countries well, often. No, they, they exert influence. They like, you know, they kind of got bribe people, people but they don't. Uh, well, they kind of intervene. Got, with they kind of like, got hardcore dunked on in the 80s in the Iran Iraq war. So it was like, you know, what about other ones like uh, like yeah. China? Do you think China has? Rules of engagement, or are they like no nope. yeah. total war, right? Yeah. Just like what our government does to us, right? So, right, right. Except I for they, they use only subversive tactics because they're afraid of being caught out in the open, right? I fully expect we would get like if if we ever decided, okay, we absolutely have to keep our guns. Th- there would be drone bombs going off like at my house or your house, and they, they would they would just say, no, we're just going to drone you instead, you know. And we're not well, going to violate. I mean, it. But then that's, I mean, that's just repeating the leftist propaganda at that point because it's, oh, you can never take on the government with your AR-15. Well, like they wouldn't <laughs> be able to do that to everybody. That's when no. you see our drones carrying C4 packages. <laughs> yeah, and just kind of like, all right, <laughs> yeah, right. I'll say, yeah, like, why, yeah, why so, not? I'll, I'll go buy, is, I'll go buy a drone from Amazon. The resistance and always Tanner, has. Right? Like, the right. resistance always has the benefit of being more precise. So they always get to decide when they want to fight. You know, an insurgency. If they don't want to fight, they can just walk away. And we're not unless they engage. You don't know that you're fighting against them. Well, right. and we're not. We're also not bound by ROEs. You know, like like I don't I don't have to shoot like you know if I don't have well to this is what he's asking like Iran right. do they have or right. Right, China do they have yeah because we're talking about like uh, the way how brutal we've been but it's like at the same time it was like I was in the military they hammered down rules of engagement and everything and escalation of use of force is like I don't know if any other countries kind of have the same kind of kind of consideration we do uh, because we're so strong. Right. right, like the United States government's so strong, so yeah, it can choose know. to be a good guy. We were allowed to level. engage with the Abrams if we were getting shot at with an AK. So, it, like, <laughs> you could shoot once Talk yeah. with a fifty cal, and then that is enough to engage with whatever else the hell you have. Uh, that's right. an escalation with like the what? We're yeah, allowed. like talk talk about disproportional force, like. That's like the that's like Israeli responses, like oh, Palestinian kid threw a rock at our tank, gotta blow his head off with a rocket now. <laughs> but these people serious? are usually using uh, these kids as uh, human shields oh, yeah. while they're trying to shoot at you, and they're like, "What am it's, I supposed to it's do?" The basis of terrorism, like yeah. that's the way it has to go because they have no means. I mean, they have no better means to uh, protect themselves. Well, yeah, because right? we're not we're not fighting uniformed armies anymore. Like this isn't the Cold War. Like we're not going up against you know uniformed Russians versus uniformed Americans. It's America versus everyone else or guess, like, boogeyman groups. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like the groups that the CIA create and fund so that they can justify their existence. Um, I guess we're already into the conversation, <laughs> but, but that's fine. Um, but before we go to the boogaloo, like what what, if, what is Virginia to do? I guess, yeah, let's continue into the Iran thing because that's interesting because yeah. I'm kind of curious to know uh, what is Iran going to do next? I think Iran knows that oh, if we do anything like too much, we, there won't be an Iran anymore. Uh, let's look at next door yeah, neighbor Ted, Iraq. Ted Cruz's make the sand glow comments. <laughs> so I think what they'll have is uh, they'll need to find something to look strong and maybe they'll fire at some ship or something like that. Maybe the U.S. is like, look, here's a ship. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. some, some Gulf of Tonkin type incident. Mm-hmm. Right. You can shoot at it. 
Uh, no one is there. Well, even North Korea captured a boat with right. a crew there. on it. I can't remember the name <laughs> it, of it. Yeah, it's it, the the boat's still there. Yep. It's, it's oh, like a, it's a big tourist it, attraction in Pyongyang. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Because you know. it, was, it was literally just filled with naval intelligence officers and they captured them and released them like 10 years later or something like that. Well, but the, the, the Gil- boat's a museum now. So, ah, that's yeah, there it is. <laughs> or even USS Liberty, you know, is mm. our, our supposed allies in the Israelis. Okay, Nick Fuentes. <laughs> <laughs> that so was, don't, you, don't you ever compare me to that conservative <laughs> cuck. Some, some allies. When have they ever helped us out in the Middle East? Never. Right. No, they've, they've, the entirety, because and that's the thing that always pisses me off about like this whole, you know, Trump, Russia nonsense is it's like, no, nobody, nobody's willing to talk about how AI pack just openly like operates. Like you have to get their blessing as a conservative candidate to get elected, but nobody wants to talk about the literal open involvement of the Israeli government through a super PAC in our electoral process, because right. if you criticize it, you're an anti-Semite. It took uh, a liberal who married her own brother to get in here, Omar, to criticize uh, Israel right. and its funding to right. kind of bring that to the forefront a little bit. Um, it's weird when I, I follow her Twitter and every once in a while I'm like, I'm in total agreement with you on this. <laughs> and, it, and it's always something foreign policy related. And, you're and like, then two tweets later, you're like, nope. <laughs> Everything else <laughs> is terrible. Yeah, just, nope. Well, it's, I mean, it's the same thing with Even Tulsi. if she's yeah. got terrible logic sometimes she gets to the right conclusion yeah right it's a it's a broken clock is right you know at least twice a day so sort of what are, so there's the uh the other side of this coin in which uh, people say don't want a world war three because it'll push out the boogaloo that we're trying to happen right uh but at the same time <laughs> uh like the escalation of use of force we have our mutual friend uh, who's kind of out there in the middle east right now in the military and he's looking at it as uh well iran did a lot of things before that drone bombing assassination occurred right there's uh the embassy there's uh some uh, escalation of, of uh, tragedy, use of force against uh, Americans while they're in Iraq under his charge. Um, there was the Iran, I remember that they captured a U.S. boat, uh, Navy ship, right? Yep. And, yeah, they uh, held the sailors for like a couple weeks. What, did they come to the American coast and capture it? I think that was international waters, <laughs> oh, actually. Oh, yeah. sorry. Forgot. <laughs> but at the I mean, same wow, time. Like, why, why does Iran keep putting its country so close to our military base? That's a good right. point, right? That's also a good point. But at even an embassy, I'd imagine even in a Kapistan, we still have embassies in other in Kapistan countries. Right. And that's what's representative like your soil and uh, like a truce, right? This is like uh, kind of like going to a church claiming um, sanctuary. It's an it's an arbitration method. Right. You know, if you have a problem that you go to the. Right. You, know, you don't shoot at the Red Cross. You don't shoot at embassies. You know, right. those are things that uh, universally. Kind but of I mean, accept. even even then, like the the whole seizing of the embassy in 79, like that was just a direct consequence of 20 something years of blowback because we. Uh, Kermit Roosevelt sanctions under the CIA overthrew the democratically elected Mossadegh just completely wiped out his government because he was trying to nationalize the oil and the British and the Americans couldn't have that and then they installed the Shah who ruled with an iron fist for 20 something years and when Carter gave him sanctuary to receive cancer treatment in New York it just all went to you know it all went to hell seems like everything is a cascading domino effect of blowbacks after blowbacks after blowbacks and i think that's something you just can't really uh escape or look to see that it's uh you know that's just what and it we've is we've been sanctioning them for the for decades now and uh <clears throat> we do this in order to punish the government supposedly and regular civilians are the ones hardest uh impacted by sanctions so it, it, their economy is in shambles and they have you, you force them into a corner and uh, it's similar to what Japan did uh, in World War Two. They didn't want to attack Pearl, Har- Pearl Harbor, but they had to because they were also being uh, what sanctioned or blockaded so. or what the North did to the South. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I still I still maintain that the South was the first victim of U.S. foreign policy. <laughs> <laughs> We're still under occupation. We are still under occupation. Reconstruction, (laughs) reconstruction never ended. Like the official, the official like policy of it might have ended, but like all of the negative consequences, like you look, you look at the, you know, Appalachia and further South, it's devastated. You know, it reminds me of um, Richard uh, Chino when he came in here and did bring something to light that I kind of forgot about, you know, when the union won that control over like our textbooks and history. Since that's why we don't remember uh, so much about Jamestown. Uh, and the first Thanksgiving, remember Plymouth, right? right. What happened years later and right. more celebratory to our Yankee yeah. history than uh, yeah, let's, let's, Southern Yeah, ones. let's celebrate the group of religious separatists who got blown off course and landed in Massachusetts instead of Virginia. Right. That's where they were headed. Right. They were headed here. 
but their ship got blown off course and landed way further north than they expected. Uh, you know what? Then that's good. Yeah. yeah. Found in Plymouth. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I'm yeah. glad that it got Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's fair, but still like, but yeah, but it's, you know, it's of course, because yeah, the union wrote the history books. And but before we move on, I wanted to point out the embassy thing. Because that's a that's a common point everybody's making. And I was watching this documentary uh, about the troubles in Ireland, and um, <clears throat> it was made by the BBC. And one of the points they made in, in 1972, they they said that after Bloody Sunday, um, which is this incident where uh, British troops shot a bunch of, of Irish Catholics in Northern Ireland, and uh, uh, people were so angry in Dublin, Ireland, which is in in the Republic of Ireland, which is in a separate country. Uh, than Northern Ireland. They went to the British embassy and burned it to the ground. And uh, the Brits... I love my people. <laughs> <laughs> and the Brits didn't do anything to respond to that. They didn't say, this is an act of war and we need to invade the Republic of Ireland. They just said, uh, well, you know, like, we kind of screwed up. And <laughs> <laughs> That's on us. And that was smart, you know. And instead, we take this as, you can't step on our our you know, land and in our embassy and we're going to, now we're going to kill all these people. Well, yeah, because it's American exceptionalism at its worst. But war hasn't been declared, right? So that's good. I mean, I think war from, like, if, if this happened to, uh, to China, I'm sure they'd be all, all up in arms or something like that. Um, but it has, I think it's been kind of restrained for the most part. I think like the assassination of uh, that, uh, that general out at the airport, freaking terrifying. If I knew, like, if I'm in Virginia, knowing that all the other states hate us, like, I'm not stepping outside of Virginia, right? Especially knowing that they have drone bombing capability, one called the the Reaper. Uh, horrible name, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this luminous, just kind of waiting for you to, you know, just cross that boundary. Yeah. Um, so I think that, that shows a lot of precision, a lot of, uh, in terms of, like, what has happened before with a lot of drone bombing chaos and those kind of numbers of civilian life kind of increasing. Um, so that, I think... Our weaponry has gotten better. Um, I don't know if it's going to be an escalation of war. I don't think it's going to go that far at all. Um, and if it does, you know, this is a great thing for the National Guard that people have con been contesting with here in Virginia. Yeah, if they all get deployed to Iran, they can't take our guns. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your service. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a common historical incident, right? It's like they send the troops away and then people at home start to create disruptions and like in the Russian revolution, that's what happened. So, mm. I mean, and then the troops who come back pick a side and, and in the case of the Russian revolution, they most, a lot of them pick the red side. Yeah. So mm. it's not a good recipe for your, <laughs> to be at war all the time. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> this is the national I mean, war the, War's the health of the state though. So that's the thing is like, uh, this is obvious. It's, it's all just a distraction because they know we're, we're all pissed off. They know that like, not even just Virginians like there I've seen stuff on the, on the internet from people, you know, halfway across the country that are like, yeah, I'll show up on lobby day. You know, I'll bring my militia group. You're like, I think yeah. uh, what we saw happen in New York when the guy was posting that video is like, look, they're coming from my magazines and clips. And some people started forming up outside, like at a local cemetery. I think they got arrested, but it was uh, the immediate response, at least on, online, woke people up to start thinking about this actually being a reality. And I think, if it happens here, the response will be a million times brighter. The signal is like beaming everywhere. You'll have people be like a Ted Bundy, uh, Bundy Ranch uh, right. situation. Yeah, uh, I think we're far better armed than New Yorkers, <laughs> and have a infinitely, lot more <laughs> infinitely better armed. <laughs> um, I don't think that's something that even the other side can ignore, and will possibly not do anything. Um, but we got the twentieth coming up, Lobby Day or VDCL Day, or uh, ending the war of Northam aggression day. Uh, some people call them military or Ralph the March, Northam. huh? Ralph Northam. Ralph Northam. 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 Right. <laughs> Remove Northam. God is a Virginian. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, I, and this goes back to like some of the stuff we talked about. Like I think, uh, Virginia will save America. We have a good history here and how we kind of deal with, uh, with tyrants. It's our, it's on our motto, right? <laughs> Have they forgotten what the flag looks like? Yeah. Not the smartest move. On right. Their part. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> like it, it, you can't really get as, as obvious. You couldn't get more obvious as a, you know, standing symbol of virtue and justice with a pike literally standing over the body of somebody. She just like Kang. yeeted <laughs> right. yeah. 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 yeah, dethroned and yeeted. And, like. and, and that hands that he has on the floor are chains that he has to chain people, right? To like chain him with this kind of legislation, chain away the liberties. I think if it were to ever happen and say, for example, that we would have to answer for that, 
It's like, look, I'm a Virginia. Have you seen our flag? Yeah. All right. That's 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 uh, yeah, that, like, that's my you, only defense. That's the only defense you, anyone has. Have you seen our history for the past two hundred <laughs> plus years? Like <laughs> yeah. going back even further than that to Jamestown, like. This and is uh, yeah. the degree to which like our founders and, and, you know, like Andrew Jackson and people like that just hated the Brits and hated the king. And it was they hate uh, they hated those people as much as, you know, your modern day neoconservative hates uh, Muslims, for instance. So <laughs> pretty seriously. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think that'd be like the best defense if you ever had to go to court. Like um, this is our creed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> Uh, so you have some of the laws that they want to push out there. And this stuff has been trying for some time since that Virginia Beach shooting mm -hmm. where a woman thought she felt safe in a government building, right? And of course, it's the government coming out here saying, oh, well, the best way to make you more safe is to take away your ability to shoot, have a gun and right. protect yourself. Which was already illegal. <clears throat> it's already illegal to carry in government, like state-owned right. buildings. So, Right. There, there is that uh, a law that passed some time ago. But I uh, I don't know. I think that should be kind of unconstitutional some part because you have like public schools, university and things like that, where you should be able to kind of walk on campus because they kind of like VCU, they take over like the city. Right. And the sidewalks. Like, so I can't yeah, walk. Like it's, it's, not, it's not like removed from the city itself. Like it, it, it is the city. Right. Right. And then you have VCU jurisdiction continues to police jurisdiction continue to expand around VCU. Uh, these wannabe cops. I got stopped and ID'd by a VCU cop once. Right. Mm -hmm. How did I go? Oh, uh, basically, I was just walking back from a concert and I happened to be standing at the wrong side of the street for too long, looking at a map. You trying to have figure, done that. Yeah. Tr yeah. I know. Mm, yeah, God, yeah, God, yeah. God, for, God forbid I was trying to figure out where I was going. These, you know, some power tripping VCU cop comes up and he's like, you got ID? And I'm like, yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> like, right. like yes am i being detained yeah I, I yeah i asked him that i'm like am i being detained or am i free to go he's like oh i'm just trying to figure out what i'm like am i being detained or am i free to go all right <laughs> like i'm not I, I don't have time for this i don't have time for you i don't have time for like the fact that you look like a 300 pound job of the hut wannabe <laughs> fuck off i'm trying to go somewhere like <laughs> right uh i have better experience with richmond cops than i do but vcu cops everyone says the same thing PC hmm. cops are just trying really hard because no one respects them. Right. And uh, <laughs> they don't gee, I wonder cops. why. Right. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> your glorified campus officer yeah. with yeah, a you're, gun you're, now. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. You, well, it's even more dangerous because you're basically Paul Blart with right. a gun. <laughs> so they want to feel like uh, when they watch these movies, like, yeah, that's me, you know? It's like, no, these are no, these are not campus police. No, <laughs> campus yeah, like security. do some push ups, do a little fitness. Like, right. these guys look like <laughs> shit and they're supposed to be protecting you. They're not protecting anybody. Well, and and the Supreme Court has ruled over and over again that they don't have to. Right. And right. the amount of people that don't understand that is terrifying. Yeah. yeah. The uh, laws that they want to pass now. Uh, so in the beginning, it was the uh, Virginia Beach stuff that kind of kicked off some of these things. But then Suppressors is what they were really after because I think the the supposed no, you mean silencers. Exactly. Right. Because <laughs> when you put it on there, what do you, you mean can never hear wants? the shot go off. <laughs> Right. It makes it instantly yeah. impossible to hear. I've seen movies. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's a click. It's just like, yeah, yeah. right. And then you have a bullet flying in the air. Yeah, obviously. Right. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. So uh, I think a lot of this stuff kind of kicked off when someone showcased to the role that Northam was either this KKK or under the hood, or he was a uh, blackface. And then he realized, I am fucked. So, yeah. He says to himself, I need to put the spotlight away from this blackface and my memory because I don't remember which one of these people I was and push it more towards um, what Democrats want, right? His base and they hate guns and he's kind of pushed it towards that. And I think uh, this has been, I think he's trying to borrow a book from like Donald Trump because Donald Trump will do that. He'll push something so far extreme. Bump stocks. Right. Uh, and then he'll pull back into something that's reasonable, right? So people are like, okay, as long as it's not that extreme, we'll. we'll Find something. That's how he negotiates. Well, and, well, and Northam's doing the same thing because he's like, <laughs> right. "Oh, well, you know, no, 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 we're not, we're not going to outright confiscate your guns." I, I believe in the Second Amendment. Like, yeah, okay. Right. Um, and he's like, "But, but those those dangerous assault weapons, you have to register them." Yeah, fuck you, right. I'm registering shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, this isn't an NFA item. I don't have to deal with the ATF. And I don't have to deal. With I have to deal with Maryland. Shit. I'm not registering anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, if I wanted to live in Maryland, I'd fucking live in Maryland. I don't want to live in Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I don't want their laws here either. Right. So I think that's kind of where all this stuff kind of kicked off. I'm just trying to show, uh, like, you know, people want to show that they're strong on drugs. This is trying to say I'm strong on guns. And one of them is the uh, coveted red flag laws that we've seen have not done so well for some people. Nope. Not at all.
There was a guy in Maryland, I think, uh, just died. Yep. Yeah. First death. Resisting. Yeah. For, for first death. First right. actual, yeah, like casualty. Right. I mean, Florida, of all places, you know, they have a Republican governor. They have a Republican majority. And they've issued, like, I think it was, like, 20,000 red flag warrants in, like, a few months. And, like, 80% of those were, like, false like it was just like a false positive. Right. I mean, it's kind of like you, like those people who are flagging you when you're playing video games against them, uh, they'll swat you. Right. Yeah. They'll say he's got all this stuff. He's messing around. It's like, uh, call the cops on them. Right. Yeah. Or it's, even if you're, you know, if you're innocent until proven guilty and you've been charged with something, you're still innocent until proven guilty. Right. So you, you have a court case in that situation. It seems like that's where they want to take people's guns. Cause they're right. like, well, you've now been charged with something, but you're out on bail. And well, because they know they know that they can't just do an outright door to door confiscation because then there would be a river of blood flowing through this state. Well, he is advocating for an 18 man team to kind of go around yeah. and prepare for something like this. <laughs> right. So, he's, yeah. He, yeah. I want to see him try that in rural Virginia. He's adding that to the budget. Right. And, uh, and also advocating a, more or allocating more money for uh, increased corrections. Uh, corrections. Yeah. Right. So, you know, the hard on crime, tough on crime Democrats always big on. Getting, and you know who's ultimately going to end up in a cage as a result of all of that is is black and brown people. Yeah, right? it's going to be their base. Right. Right. <laughs> white white people, affluent whites, they ha who have a lot of guns, they'll just put them in some other state, you know, and then we'll get in They trouble. can stage or, a real boating accident. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll go get the permits and the licenses right. and register them. Right. And donate to enough, donate enough campaign money to get away with it. Right. Know? Right. Right. A shall issue license. And yeah. Right. I ran into someone who tried to convince me of the red flag law. He said some kind of anti-gun thing in D.C. a long time ago. And I seemed very passionate about it. And the way that he was saying is that, like, you know, someone is having, like, they have issues. You know, sometimes some people are suicidal. And this leads to eventually just, like, shooting themselves. Right? I was like, but you can look at places like, uh, what is it, South Korea. They don't really have that kind of problem with a lot of guns. And yet they still have a really high suicide rate. So, uh, not with the high gun concentration areas that we have here, and they don't—they lack over there. Yet they still have super high suicide rates. So it's not so much that accessible access to guns is what's going to pull it off. Like they'll find yeah, efficient means. Yeah, you'll just—you'll just switch the the, the methodology. Right. I mean, well, it's, this, it's the same thing in the UK. You know, they banned firearms, and now they have a knife crime epidemic. Right. Well, this is the thing they can right. never focus on why society has degraded to the point where people are willing to do this to each other. Instead, oh, we have to ban the medium to do it right right but and they'll say like you're you're suicidal you're not feeling too well about yourself so like a family member can say like and even if they think that they, even they don't understand your argument right mm -hmm. especially if you're coming from like uh you know uh abolish the state a uh, free liberate you know it's like i don't know maybe he's being he wants to kill himself i don't, I don't know right, <laughs> right. <laughs> he's talking nonsense right dude. yeah he sounds crazy oh, i mean absolutely i could imagine like somebody could look at I don't know my Google history and some of my <laughs> like Amazon purchases over the past three months. And yeah, you could be like, wow, John has uh, totally lost his mind. He's lost his mind. <laughs> right. And you may be right. Okay. <laughs> but, I'll say you spent, you spent five minutes on my Facebook and you're like, mm, I don't know. I've seen his memes. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know. <laughs> but you know, we, we don't like, we can't be managed and these people just want to manage people from the top down. This is the Bloomberg model, right? Right. Yeah. It's all just a bunch of Karen's. Well, if y'all had as much money as I had, then you would have the resources to manage people like I would, I do. Right. So I'm better y'all just than a you. bunch of pores. Yeah. Get out of my I'm, way. I'm better than you. Like, okay, man, sure. But that's what red flags are terrifying because it's right. an easy a phone call, and you don't really have to prove. I can't imagine nope. telling the cops like, yeah, I'm his relative. There's, yeah, there's, like, there's, there's okay, no proof. I, I believe you. Yeah. And then what's to make up? What's to prevent like cops even making faint phone calls and saying like, because a lot of this stuff is just anonymous, right? We have an anonymous call. Uh, yeah, we heard, uh, you know, some noise, a complaint. Oh, show me the complaint. Oh, it was anonymous. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay, okay. Right. How can yeah, you? Oh, it, was, it was a neighbor. Like, okay, which right, one? Which one? Right. Yeah. Yeah. There was a case in California <laughs> where this father's uh, son situation, I guess somebody called a noise complaint. The, or no, it wasn't a noise complaint. It was an ADT alarm that got tripped accidentally. Mm. And the cops show up and they find like 150 guns in the house and... This must have been a collector or something, but, you know, he had an arsenal that wasn't registered in California. And so, you know, in any other state, it would have just been, oh, oh well. Okay, right. that's a lot of guns. Cool. His, <laughs> so, so his alarm was correct. It did tip him off. The burglars came right. in to steal his shit. They were happy right. to be cops. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, they just, yeah, they just <laughs> Through civil asset forfeiture, yeah, the cops steal badges. more than <laughs> private criminals anyway. So, yeah. Uh, so red flag laws for agreement suck. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What about cool. um, guys? Universal background checks. <laughs> oh, you mean those things that have never worked? All right. Cool. Hmm. Uh, 
Well, we got to make sure that you're not, uh, you know, someone, some, someone's list. And I don't, why doesn't the government do universal background checks when they like transport guns to Mexico or give them the moderate <laughs> rebels? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that burns. Yeah. Ooh, like, right. oh, ooh, fast and I furious. don't think that oh. they're, I don't think they're the ones that should be doing the background checks. They're pretty incompetent. It's obvious. So. And we do, we need to do background checks on the government, but the, uh, disarm federal agents. Right. Yeah. But the, I guess these universal background checks are supposed to be in addition to what currently goes on now, what you would have to do Advanced a background private check. Sales. Oh yeah. So no private sales. Pretty much. And it, was there anything else like that's psychological? It. No, that's it. That's it. It literally like all, all universal background checks boils down to is they don't want you as a private citizen contractually and voluntarily entering into an agreement with another private citizen without a third party, without a third party to exchange goods and services. And you can already bring a gun to a gun store uh, if you don't quite know the person and say, yeah, I just want to, I want to demand a $50 background check. And that one, that's, and that's, that's the, the funny thing about like when, when they all start, you know, screeching about the, the the gun show loophole, like Virginia, Virginia law. Like if you look up in the code of Virginia, I don't know how it is in other States, but I know specifically for Virginia, if you look up in the code, the state police are mandated to be at every single gun show that happens within our borders to operate a kiosk or like a little, little station. Booth. Yeah. Booth to do private sale, nominal fee background checks. Makes $10. Sense. I always right? wonder them, like, what are these red them, coats doing yeah, here? You pay, yeah. yeah. You pay them $2. You, you, and so like, if you, if you're walking around a gun show and you have like, you know, like a, like a rifle and you want to sell it and somebody approaches you and you're like, Hey, I want to buy your rifle. I got cash. Okay, cool. Hey, I don't really know you that well, right. blah, blah, blah. Would you mind coming over to the, the state police booth real quick and doing a two dollar background check and they're like yeah sure that's fine because most reasonable people aren't trying to you know illegally acquire a gun and it, even if you were you just go you go find somebody on craigslist and meet them in a parking lot and they'll sell you a tech nine out of the back of their trunk <laughs> like it's not that difficult i know i've done it yeah, know, okay? <laughs> if, you know, if you need a guy yeah. i know a guy hit me i'm just kidding but like but in all seriousness it's like you can't like if if this stuff didn't work for drugs what the hell do they think it's going to do for guns like really right that i would say is symbolic but, right <laughs> yeah as uh their virginia attorney general will say like a lot of the stuff that we're doing here with uh creating second amendment sanctuary oh, there's no legal weight yeah okay right. cool there's just symbolic and you'll find uh, the next thing on the list here is ban on assault weapons. Yep. And come on, guys. Yeah. So assault is right there. Right. Right. Assault's bad, right? Right. <laughs> we mean, right. But these are my assault <laughs> muskets. You know, I don't really change with the times. You know, I keep it concurrent with when Virginia was founded. Right. Th this is what SB 16. So yep. the, the major kerfuffle about this one was that it's going to be uh, retroactive. So there's no grandfather clause. So any per any assault weapon anyone owns would have to be, uh, I guess, confiscated. Or uh, if they update it, supposedly you would have to register it. Yeah. And, the, just and what, confiscation. what exactly is an assault rifle in their definition? Uh, accepting a detachable magazine? Well, it's, it's funny you ask that, Kurt, because I happen to have yeah. the text of the bill right here. Um, so let's see. Tell us. So for, the, yeah. Yeah, for the purpose of this section, assault firearm means a semi-automatic centerfire rifle that expels single or multiple projectiles projectiles by action of an explosion of a combustible material with a fixed magazine capacity in excess of 10 rounds. So, you know, most pistols. Yeah. Yeah. At literally every, every <coughs> modern semi-auto for the most part. Yeah. A semi-automatic centerfire rifle that expels single or multiple projectiles, blah, blah, blah. That has the ability to accept a detachable magazine that has one of the following characteristics. One, a folding or telescoping stock. Two, a pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the rifle. Three, a thumb hole stock. So can't even do Clinton assault weapon ban style right style rifles anymore. Uh, four, a second hand grip or protruding grip that can be held by the non-trigger hand. You know those super deadly vertical four grips. Uh, a bayonet mount because you know we have bayonet charges in the twentieth twenty first century. A grenade a grenade launcher because you know we all have you know two or three. Yeah, we have, we're all yeah we're all walking around with the ability, the paperwork to accept you know those are fun actually destructive yeah, devices. Yeah. Um, a flare launcher, okay. A Elon silencer, Elon Musk. Yeah, a silencer, a flash suppressor, a muzzle brake, a muzzle compensator, a threaded barrel capable of accepting a silencer, flash suppressor, muzzle brake, or muzzle compensator, Oof. or any characteristic of light, like kind as enumerated in clauses one through eight. That's everything. <laughs> That's everything. Well, what, what do we get to play with then? Um, you get to play with <clears throat> basically a bolt action. 
if that. Which is incredibly deadly. Like, yep. if you wanted to <laughs> kill a lot of people, I'm sure yep. you could with right. one of those things. The, the sniper with the I most I saw the kills. Patriot with White uh, death, yeah. Mel Gibson. Yeah. 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 Right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, so basically they, they leave us with nothing. Oh, um, no, those are muskets, right? Yeah, those are muskets. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, even still, like even a, even a bolt gun, like you could be as you could be deadlier. You could be deadlier with that than anything else because they all shoot full more rifle calibers because I love how <laughs> that's that's the one thing I love about the about the like the anti gun like rhetoric is when you're talking about hunting, right? Like, oh, if you need an AR-15 to hunt, you're a bad hunter. Well, first of all, according to the Virginia Department of Inland Fisheries and Game, you can't hunt deer with a 223 because it's not powerful enough. But the second you start talking about school kids, oh, it's like it's the most deadly round that's ever been developed in the history of mankind. How many hunters right. do we have here in Virginia? Probably, like probably more than probably more than we know of. More than the yeah. Virginia Guard. Uh, yeah, yeah, any of you guys hunt? I, I don't hunt. I've never. I've never hunted in Virginia. That's something we should do together sometime in the fall. Yeah. 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 Learn how to shoot our own game. Do we do it bow and arrow style though, Rambo style? No, just that's pretty advanced. So <laughs> I'd say it's just yeah, run yeah. it down. <laughs> Bow, Bowie knife so on the deer trees. A herd of deer come in, and we all drop, drop down. down on yeah. <laughs> drop, drop down with Bowie knives and just right. you know paint our faces. This is how you blood. do it, Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> this is the real sleeper hole. <laughs> yeah, it's like 308 is uh, devastating. That would be a devastating round to get to hit a human with. Yeah. I mean, usually they use it for like um, what, like vehicles. Uh, 50 cal is usually used for oh. vehicle operations, but 308 is usually like designated marksman. So it's, it basically fills the, the, the kind of void between like the effective end of five, five, six is like lethality. And then like a dedicated sniper caliber. So it's like, Oh, I need to hit somebody like, you know, 500 plus yards away. Okay, cool. I have a 308 rifle and that bullet will still maintain right. enough velocity to do damage at that distance. Whereas a five, five, six kind of starts to like in terms of, I don't know. Off. I guess they say cars are bad um, cover, right? Oh, yeah. But Terrible cover. But in terms of like a 308, it's like, yeah, it's definitely bad cover. Oh, Wait, yeah. You know, a lot worse than, you know. Yeah, even, a yeah, yeah I mean, even a, even a, even a 5.56, five, like a heavier weight, like competition load, I can easily go through a car. I mean, mm. you look at, I mean, hell, we even have real, a real world example of that. You look at the, the aftermath of the UPS truck. Right. And that's right. shooting. Like that thing was pepper. And like you could see, like if you watch the video from the, the, the footage from the helicopter, you could see sparks going off where the rounds were like impacting like the dash and stuff like that. And like hitting like the See metal. this, I love this like a good go. These cops, they all have to go under a Jack Wilson training course. Yes, yes. right. And if exactly. uh, Jack Wilson says, uh, yeah, they don't good. do that. <laughs> he, they don't get certified. They can't yeah. hold a gun. Well, and that's, and that, yeah, and that, that's, that's the, that's the funniest thing is like, again, these people constantly are like, oh, well the cops should, the cops are the only ones that should be armed. Uh, I saw that video. I no. Right. <laughs> like if, if five different law enforcement agencies have to put like, Hundred plus rounds into a UPS truck to kill to get one guy, and then they end up killing the hostage Russian style too. Like, yeah, there was about the same number of cops there as there were inside that church and uh, white settlement in Texas, and they all drew guns too. And there was no civilians. Nope. And they also did. And they also didn't take cover behind their fellow church guards. Right. They were right. like, <laughs> right, and get them caught in the crossfire. <laughs> and just like the presence of mind and the patience that that guy showed, Jack, like that Jack Wilson showed. It was impressive. He was just standing there and he was waiting and he got and he took one shot right. <laughs> on, a move, on a moving target. It's like in the impressive. head yeah. at, at least 50 feet. Right. <laughs> like, I can't do that. Right. No, not a lot of people could. No. But 357 USA and the 357 SIG. SIG. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's back that'll, on that'll, that'll dome you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was at a church. Through God, all things are possible. <laughs> right. Indeed. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to deny that there was a little bit of a divine in, in, intervention in that one. I think so, too. Um, yeah. and that's who they say that should be sending to Iran, right? Let's let him do it. <laughs> negotiate with the Iranians. <laughs> <laughs> just, send, just send him to Tehran. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> that made me come back. <laughs> I'll bring my two two nine. You don't want to see me. You don't want to see what I can do with that. He right. only uses crazy calibers of like <laughs> yeah, yeah. super weird. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Uh, my my back my backup's a forty four auto mag. Like okay. <laughs> So how many sanctuaries are there total now? Uh, last I heard, there was at least over 100. <clears throat> All right, Virginia, there's what was it like 93 counties, uh, 36 cities, something like that, and then like a couple like smaller like townships, also municipalities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that are not cities. Um, so that's pretty big. That's pretty much the whole state of Virginia for the most part. Yeah, right. Except uh, for Trader Loudon. Uh, <sighs> 
And it wasn't, that long ago, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't that long ago that loud was like <laughs> red pill, you know? Right. Yeah, they were solid. Yeah, yeah. But you look at the you look at the electoral map and pretty much the entire area in which I live is just solid. I will red. say that yeah. that's gonna change in the next election. Mm-hmm. I think the whole state is gonna turn red. Uh in t- in tidal wave. I think what ends up happening during these elections, a lot of people feel as you should, not so much like complacent, but like I'm living my own life. Nothing bothers me. I'm doing good. I just want to be left alone. Economy's supposed to be good. <laughs> I guess. Right. Supposedly. Democrats come in and just start messing with you like they're doing now. It's like, then you wake them all up. It's like, all right, now they're going to come out. And well, and I, and I mean, and that's like just the results of the last election. Like, that's just that's a complete like indictment of the Virginia GOP. Like they let 30 something seats go completely uncontested. I heard those like, 30 you- seats that were in like Democrat controlled. Um, I mean, counties even still, regions. you know, it, you, but they should have done yeah, like someone. Well, wait, wait, here, here's, here's the, here's something that I'm borrowing from someone else mm. that well, he's saying they used to join the Democrats. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think Republicans, then if you know that they already control, they dominate that region, then send someone in as a Democrat, right. And challenge the incumbent. <laughs> I swear, I am it's like you. Primary, <laughs> Hello, I, fellow I, kids. I, yeah. Hello, fellow kids. I too love the gays <laughs> <laughs> and socialism. You just yeah. say like, I too love the fags. Yeah. Like, well, whoops. Oh, oh, I mean the gays. Oh, yeah. uh, the the, the Muslims. Oh, I mean My the people of the religion of peace. Okay, got it. <laughs> got it. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. But okay. So well. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Now I'm a white supremacist. My yeah. bad. That could work. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so, so that's, that, yeah, I would say they fumbled fum- the ball for that too. I don't think there was just, I think they're just kind of looking at the patterns because Virginia does have a pattern whenever the president is in or the governor is one sort of uh, political party, Virginia switches to the other. And Virginia's kind of been going back and forth. Yeah, we've for, kind of always been a swing state in right. that sense. Well, um, it's advantageous for Virginia because it's kind of protected from the national political cycle. So, mm-hmm. you know, all of our elections end up being in these odd years. and Or, I mean, we have elections every year, but usually it's... Uh, like the statewide ones. Right, the statewide ones, they don't get any coattails from the president. So a lot of people are going to come out to vote for Trump they would probably just say, okay, I'm going to vote for all the other Republicans too, but that, mm-hmm. that they can't do that in these elections. So, mm. <clears throat> uh, but Virginia looks pretty much red, which is a good thing. Virginia looks pretty much, uh, and the entire state looks like a pro sanctuary. I think that's a good way to kind of push other states to kind of do the same thing. And I've heard some other counties and across the country have started pushing this also. Kentucky. Uh, yeah, Kentucky. <coughs> Colorado's. Been, yeah, Colorado's in, been. Started Col- in Indiana, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. No, guys, this is just symbolic. Yeah, <laughs> right. right. It's just yeah. symbolic. <laughs> now, what are the effects, right? There would be that the sheriffs or those counties, municipalities will not put any resources towards uh, the state or Yeah, the they're going to just ignore it. Right. It's like, uh, yeah, you have someone who's like, who? Yeah, I don't know yeah. anything about that. Right? Well, and, and I mean, I think it, you know, just on a like practical level, if for whatever reason any of this stuff passes, like especially with the right flag laws, like we just DDoS their database, like flood the shit out of their ancient databases with every name in the book. Just start reporting the phone book. <laughs> report the <laughs> like literally just, just start go A through Z. <laughs> report the phone book. Crash their databases. Just That's make, actually a good point. Make, yeah, make, like you know, I and I am uh, sort of like an I am Spartacus sort of situation. Right. It's like who's the real red flag <clears throat> target? Although they like, all well, did get crucified in the end. So, well, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, the, the Romans do what the Romans do. So. <laughs> they, yeah, we ain't fighting the Romans anymore. You know, like no. the, those guys were uh, not not messing around, but uh, right. <laughs> they didn't believe in the Second Amendment. Back then. There was nobody back then to take pictures of what was happening to have a mass media uproar. About well, it. and that, yeah, and that's the other thing is like like we're talking about, like with Iran, like just the 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 blowback there is like, you know, devastating for our foreign policy. But like the blowback here, they tried right. any of that stuff like. The second you drop a drone on a drone bomb on somebody, the entire the entire population turns against you. Well, that's that's what happened in Northern Ireland. It was uh, I'm, the reason I'm mentioning it is because I just watched this documentary. But they, <laughs> with the, one of the points that they made was that the Catholics had initially trusted the Brit the British soldiers, right. and it was only after a series of like killings by the British soldiers that the IRA started to get the trust of the average Catholic people in Northern Ireland. So 
I don't think we're there yet. I think the average people still trust the government, still trust the America, the National Guard and the police. But there may come a, an event that happens. Could be on January 20th. Yeah. When it, it, it takes one massacre and then because I mean, you look, you look, no at, you look back in the revolution, you look know? at the Boston massacre. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. They only, yeah, they only, they only killed like what? Five colonists. Oof. And then like the whole, the whole rest of the colonies were like, I mean, all right, cool. He had the national guard shoot at uh, Kent state. Yep. Um, I don't, what was the reaction to that? It's like nothing. suppression. Well, yeah, yeah, let's no, not let this information nothing. out. Right. Well, it wasn't in Virginia. <clears throat> no. So I think, uh, yeah, if something were, were like of that kind of kind of were to happen, you would have, uh, sparks of like the revolutionary fervor coming out here again. And I think that'd be a good thing. Um, hopefully it doesn't come down to that. I just got a cool job. So I don't want to have right. to like <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Uh, quit that. Uh, but if it does happen, then yeah, I have to do my duty, uh, to Virginia, to God, to my friends, Virginians, and kind of go out there. Yeah. Um, it is the way this is, is the way. The way. Yep. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, January 20th is supposed to be a showcase of tens of thousands of people showing up from across the country. All I, over genu- the state. I genuinely hope that we're able to like completely and utterly flood the Capitol and, and, <laughs> make, and make, you know, make the little stupid moms demand action, you know, Bloomberg right. AstroTurf groups like right. keep, they, keep they them gotta, in a corner. They like. got to bust them in. Yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah. Well, they yeah. buy out the buses every time any pro to a organization tries to do any organization. They, really? They bought out. They they were going to buy tickets for $15. Bloomberg offered them $20 per seat. Wow. And bought all the buses and said, wow. just stay parked. Yeah. Wow. You know, th- this is what happens when you have, you know, massive amounts of money following you around. It's uh, yeah. Yankees still trying to control the exactly, South. Exactly, right? Uh-huh. Well, it's, you know, you look at that. It looks like, I mean, to me, I think that it's a great opportunity for civil disobedience. Like when you see in Germany, all those uh, farmers with their tractors, tractors just piling into the highways. And nobody can get it. And like in Paris, they'll lock up the entire city and, um, and stop all the subways and everything. And so that seems like uh, so yeah, you get, a smart you get tactic. A, you get a, you get enough sympathetic truckers to just block ninety five. Like I know yeah, some where they're going to go. Truckers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah like where, where are they going to go? Like all right, right, yes, yeah, especially ninety five. And who can argue with you? You know, you're not doing anything violent. You're just doing civil disobedience. And this is what they My praise truck when down. Yeah, when Nothing BLM does yeah. it. Oh, oh, they only oh. praise it when it's like <clears throat> Extinction Rebellion, a bunch of sore boys like just trying to super glue themselves to the subway and <laughs> right. like business, like business cuck folks are just like government agents are just like walking through them. It's like you use super glue. You there are <laughs> patterns of <laughs> should have. I chained myself to a tree. Listen to me. Uh, yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> like, why should I'm I? I'm not trying to get run over. Yeah. Like I just bulldoze <laughs> you out of the way. Like it's not so. That what hard. what uh, are some examples where this has happened? Where the government has. Uh, uh, succumb to those demands to change it. Or gun gun control? We're not even or gun control. Any kind of issues where they just kind of... Bundy Ranch. Bun, Bundy Ranch, right? <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah. kind of the big one. Right. Uh, it's when you match them. I mean, the Yellow uh, Jackets is still going on in, in France. France. Do they yeah. succumb to any of their demands or anything like that? I well, I like think the best example is probably Brexit, right? Because yeah. you know, maybe there wasn't as much protesting, but uh, it was totally out of the blue, and the average person definitely saw it as a... Oh, it's Chile, I think, or Argent. No, I think it was Chile, Argentina, down there, where they were. Mm. They were like, okay, yeah, we're, I we're, think it's Chile. Yeah, yeah. we're like, yeah. okay, we'll write whatever you guys uh, want. When they just kind of took blowing over. up buses, yeah, yeah, or they took setting over them on the, fire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. just please stop sending the buses on fire. <laughs> right. I mean, uh, same thing with Hong Kong. You know, they they got real creative. Right. The, right. Uh, they, they're gluing, finally gluing the, the gluing the bricks to the road so that the the police vehicles couldn't come through, and then they just yeeted the shit out of them with right. Molotovs. Right. I mean, when you look at the average traffic problems that you see in like dc or even around here sometimes like this that's just everyday life imagine if somebody was purposely <laughs> like doing ma- stuff yeah, like and gluing shit to the yeah, to the yeah like an actual disruption not just like <laughs> stupid people who can't drive like yeah right. it would be 100 percent worse a zillion times worse <laughs> well and, the, and the, honestly i think that would like either work in our favor or work against us it all depends on how it's like how it works out and how it's framed Right. Because it's like it, it'll start getting like the average, you know, apolitical, you know, NPC type person to start caring. They would come like down you, it's here. Like, yeah, it's like you disrupted my morning commute. Right. I care now. It's like, that well, makes. thank you. Like, <laughs> but Richmond is at a interesting crossroads, not that far from DC. Like anyone on the East Coast can really get down here. Yeah, right, I say right. pretty much anybody in the ninety-five quarter. Right, you just straight down or straight up, depending on if you're coming from. Well, you know, imagine the that. States. Like that happens, and Richmond's kind of like blockade. And we're kind of stuck here for a couple of months now. Yeah. I mean, we can yeah. just turn it into Mogadishu. Yeah. 
tire, tire, tire issue. Yeah, tire. Yeah, we have to make sure we uh, order our laser pointers uh, <laughs> together. Uh, yeah, and then take, take out the take out the Virginia State Police drones. I mean, it's just you know, incredible tire like, fire like blockades and stuff. Yeah, I, I guess think it would can, be a way to show restraint. You know, like right. uh, you know that type of thing isn't just pulling a bunch of rifles out and starting. You know, it's it's just. Uh, it's saying, okay, we could do a lot worse. We don't. Yeah. Like, right. <laughs> like, this, this is us tame. Right. Like, right. Right. Push us any further and it's not going to be pretty. Like, get rid of North M and yep. uh, we'll go home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Right. Yep. Well, get rid of him, get rid of Fairfax, get rid of Herring. Yeah. Especially Fairfax. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I heard. I heard he, he's considering a run for yeah, governor in twenty twenty one. Even though he's got all despite his sexual assault, assault, yeah, yeah, yeah sexual abuse him. scandal. All right. So it's like okay, so the the KKK Grand Wizard. Gets well, that's kind of like who the Democrats kind of you know kind of rally around. And then, and then, his, and then his house boy gets to you know run for governor later. Like, we'll okay. set up headquarters in the governor's uh, mansion at the Capitol. Yeah. 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 I mean, <laughs> is that where he lives? Right, supposedly at the mansion there. I guess that's where you have to live if you're right. the governor. Yeah, I was saying it's like it, I guess it's the same. I guess thing he just like won't be there on the twentieth. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good. That's be. a good question, right? I right. mean, how many of these uh, politicians? Because that's technically lobby day, so you're right. supposed to go to your your legislator and speak to them about. And I know where all mine I'm stand. Make myself no. Yeah. I'm going to show my legislator that I'm a person. And if it's a Republican who you. supports guns, then they're going to just say, well, oh, yes, but, I'm here yeah, to support well, you. Yeah, but see, the thing is, is like uh, somebody somebody pointed this out on social media somewhere like a while ago that I saw that if you are a Republican, like if you're like running on that platform, like you can't be anti-gun because you'll never get elected. Right. Yeah, but you could be pro red flag law, like right. Uh, yeah, you could be. Yeah, you can. One eye yeah. Dan Crenshaw. <laughs> you mean one eye John McCain? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think uh, like the whole calling your senator sort of thing is probably what got Northam and or rallying up his base and having uh, maybe out of staters for like Bloomberg calling a base of people to call Virginia senators and saying like, that. Yeah, I'm from uh, you know Lowney County and just kind of pretending. Well, they're- I was in. I, I had to leave it because it was full of just the most like nuclear cringe boomer shit ever. <laughs> but I was in a, I was in a Loudoun County second amendment sanctuary group for a while. And um, yeah, one of the, one of the admins, I guess is like somebody who's on the VCDL board of directors that I just found out recently, but he was like, everybody in this group should, you know, call their Senator and call their representative and talk to the, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, find out who your board of supervisor member is and, you know, send them letters and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, so they're just going to ignore all that. That's fine. But yeah, you know, I don't know about sending letters. That'll be like, yeah. All right. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Sort that out of the mail room and just gets thrown into an incinerator. It's whatever. Right. Yeah. It's just like th- that whole, that whole thing about, you know, oh, you got to contact your Senator and blah, blah, blah. It's like, they don't care. They're not going to care. Yeah. I think they do care if there's a lot of people and they realize that they're not going to get elected. And right. If, if they think psychologically, this is my base and mm-hmm. they generally will have to change to what their base has to feel. I think maybe the phone calls, leaving a voicemail kind of works, works. maybe um, emails work. Um, but I wouldn't really do much more than that by just letting him, I think of not saying anything, I guess they'll think like, well, I guess Virginians don't care. They're complacent. I'm all right. Cool. It's not a big deal. Well, they're going to be vote. subject to confirmation bias the same. So if they get 10, if they're anti-gun and they get 10 calls to say, Hey, we want guns. And then they get one call that says, Hey, you should ban guns. They're going to be like, Oh, well I got one call for pro gun and I got one call for anti-gun and they're just going to like right. put it out of their mind. Right. right. I'm not that negotiating with these people. No, I'll right. just make my own guns if right. they want to come take them. I think uh, literally, no, and I'll just is, be posted up, and you know where to find me. <laughs> right. I think uh, like that group APL. Uh, that's their method, right? Trying to call these people in convention or AFP. Change. AFP. Yeah, right. yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and tell them like I guess they passed some good legislation for doctoral. Sure. It's a lot of time out of your day, you know, and, yeah. and if you don't succeed, it's like, was that even worth it? Even if you do succeed, you're like, did my effort make a difference? You know? Right. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of work and they could take up a lot of your time, but I think your time is probably best spent just working out, <laughs> training, you learning to use stuff like investing learning. in yourself, yeah, right? Le- learning, right. learning valuable skills. Sure. Yeah. Well, and, and like in that same group, there was a, uh, there was a woman who, uh, like what you were saying about how the Republicans should just kind of like sneakily infiltrate into the Democrats. She, right. she did the same thing with the Moms Demand Action meeting that, I was going, that was going on in the local area. She took a lot of notes and got a lot of good intel. And they have can- they have the most canned AstroTurf responses. It's literally like a 
form that you fill out and you're like, hello, my name is insert name here. And I think that you should support right. these measures and blah, See? blah. And it's, it's all bullet pointed. It's laid <clears throat> out for the like, even the most simple, like monkey brained idiot to follow. So it shows that it is working. Uh, they're doing it. And that's how they're getting the influence to put out. And nobody's calling back, at least like feeling the anger. Like yeah. we're here on the 20th. Yeah. It doesn't continue even after the 20th. And they'll think, oh, it's just like a, a blip, you yeah. know? Uh, they don't feel like these, like, like that they're like, careers at risk or their office is at stake mm -hmm. um and i think maybe i've never done it but maybe i will maybe a phone call just let me like hey i'm virginian uh we know where you live not well, kind of like that but <laughs> <laughs> we know where you live i mean i'm not 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 above that <laughs> but i was gonna say i mean you guys are you know kind of screwed in that way because your state senator is the convicted you know teenage rapist mm. joe that morrissey us? yeah is that chesterfield uh, that might be yours. Mine. No, it's, it's, the, it's, Mine the, Senate cool. dist it's the Senate district. That it, no, yeah, his yeah. Senate district includes most of the areas are in and around Richmond. Oh yeah, my area right. is in Rico, mm -hmm. and uh, she's she's good. She barely got elected because she's like a local OBGYN, and uh, you know, she she just has a lot of relationships. Yeah, just with just people. campaigned on like I'm a doctor. Yeah, I deliver it all your kids. So, <laughs> so you're on rep. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I feel there's five thousand people at the rally when I went there, uh, but the there's even someone from California who managed to get in to kind of sneak in and get some time in. But then the person was like, so where are you from? Well, California's like, yeah, you can't talk here. Yeah, just <laughs> go away. Yeah, sorry. Like, this is for Chesterfield County people. But you, this person came from California and shows us that they're busting people in oh, yeah. to try to take over. Wow. Right. And try to showcase, like, this is what Virginia's think about. Like, this is not what Virginia's think no, about. not at all. I haven't seen anybody coming out of the woodwork uh, supporting gun control. I, and even if they were a Democrat and they voted for a Democrat, I bet that wasn't their number one issue no, in a lot of all. these places. All right. Well, and like I, I saw some of the pictures from the initial board meeting, the, that, uh, it got like our resolution got shot down by our, you know, see you next Tuesday of a board supervisor, uh, like the person in charge, the at large member. And, uh, there was like four, people in the front row they were like wearing mom's demand action shirts and they were all like sitting there like reading books and like knitting <laughs> like literally like they, they look it looked like a woman's book club mm. and i was like yeah you guys are real invested in this issue yeah and those same people you you gotta wonder like are they on the other issues that they support or oppose are they in the background like supporting uh a bombing of some guy overseas or you know like these same people it's amazing how hypocritical they can be when they uh oh, i just want little kids to live uh, you know, but yeah, but not brown kids overseas. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. Well, coming up here to wrap up, uh, what would it look like if uh, Virginia were to fall into uh, the boogaloo? And it wouldn't be a civil war because we're not interested in taking over the rest of the country. Not at right? all. Uh, that's for or even taking over the state. Like <laughs> Right. Right. Yes. Yeah, so we just want to be left alone. Right. Yep, exactly. Or uh, uplift the occupation. Right. Uh, to how it was uh, before all this mess and political yep. madness came to be. And I think Virginia can do a good job in uh, leading the country and how it should be done. If it does happen, then I think Virginia will still come out on top and still kind of show how it should be done better than Hong Kong or any other place in the world. That this is probably the most well-armed state, I will say, maybe <laughs> close to next well, to Texas. The, well, so yeah, I would say on this side well, of the country, for right. sure. Utah's, uh, there's a lot of gun manufacturers in Utah. There's a lot in Utah. So There's right? a surprising yeah. number in Washington <laughs> State as well. No, like for, but for they're away reason. from the coast. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah they're right. yeah they're in rural Washington, not in like you know the because yeah. and and that's and that's the other thing is like the kind of the tying this whole thing together is people like just suddenly think it's like this you know big revelation that like population centers control the like politics. It's like it happens in every state, right? Like you move outside of the cities, people are more self reliant. People are more you know maybe people leave because they they're, they're tired of the politics. Yeah, they, they're right. just like we yeah. want to be left alone. We just want to live our lives. But they you know, they blah, find blah, blah. that they'll still be controlled while still there. Exactly. Lingering like an ISR on. Yeah. I think in Virginia, if the, I mean, well, again, going back to like thinking about this in terms of who supports um, the, the cops and the National Guard and the governor and who believes in the system, I think most people do. And most people probably would see like a U.S. flag on a, on a shoulder and, you know, immediately show support or something reflexively. And that's please you know, take my guns. Thank you for yeah, your service. So that's got to change at some point, and, you know, in the next, in the future someday is when they need to that people need to kind of change their view of like who's on our side and who's not. 
right? Right. Well, because people people still like cling to the whole, you know, like sandcastle fallacy of like, oh yeah, if something kicks off, all the you know, all the military are gonna defect and they're gonna come join the revolution and be on our side. No, they're not. They're people too. They have a paycheck. They have they have a livelihood that they're that that's tied to. A lot of if, them are going it, for the full 20 and they don't yeah, want to give that up. Yeah, right. it's like if you wife if, and kids too. Exactly. Like, yeah, if you take away their livelihood, if you take away, you're basically taking like money from their, your like food out of their kids' mouths. Most people are willing to do some pretty fucked up stuff to keep their kids. Fed. And the federal government has way more money than you do. So oh, yeah. it's not like you're yeah. going to sub out right. the federal, you're not going to pay them. There instead were of some government. example of this going on during Katrina where the National Guard came in knocking door to door, trying to get some guns. You know, who can say that's a precursor of things to come or them trying to practice for some exercises in the future. But that did happen. Yeah. Um, well, practice has been over in Iraq. You know, that's right. been good. Well, and that's and that right. was that was the that was the ironic thing was I watched a like a, a documentary produced about that whole, you know, aftermath of Katrina and them, you know, declaring that no one could have guns, even the parts that weren't affected by the flood. And there was a I think it was like a 19 year old like private uh, in one of the National Guard units that was literally going door to door doing confiscations. And and the newscaster that was doing like the voiceover was like. Oh, we interviewed him and uh, he says that he would rather be doing this on the streets of Baghdad. And I'm like, okay, cool. So you don't like doing it to your own citizens, but you're just going to nut up and do it. You'd rather be doing it to brown people in, Af- in Iraq. Got it. He had some right. slight cognitive dissonance. He's like, I can't it, believe it. Just, like- just a tad. Like, <laughs> I think the only flag that should be waved and running around down there will be uh, the Virginia flag. Black. Uh, right. right. Uh, and maybe we'll have a big uh, old picture of Ron Paul and call it the uh, Ron Paul. Oh, what are we use this one? <laughs> oh, there we go. We yeah. got it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> like they do, like an Ayatollah or an Iran when pictures. Right. <laughs> when, when Soleimani died, they they, they like Inshallah, take the picture off will, the wall and yeah. bring it with them to the protest. It's, it's yeah. weird. Inshallah, we will carry on the Ron Paul revolution. <laughs> right. And then they'll have to say something when his face is plastered all over the news, right? Yeah, there you it's go. Like right. some, what, what are the Ron Paul yeah. Yeah, some, some <laughs> Some weirdos in Virginia were holding up your your poster like it was a religious symbol. <laughs> that, yeah, that'll get us on the next episode of the Liberty Report. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we do it, guys. <laughs> Daniel Adam, McAdams will put out kibosh on it. Like, yeah, sure. Humidity yeah. sees cows. He'll see, he'll see no, no, no. that guy. <laughs> None of that. <laughs> All right. So with that, stay liberated, stay strapped. Get off my property. Make new guns. Your liberties aren't dying. They're being killed by people with names and addresses.